Most Lynch users out there use the Display Manager through something like GNOME, KDE, or other desktop environments to start up their X server. In my case though, I've been using an application known as StartX. This is a CLI application that is basically all that same stuff for you. Now StartX is actually an easier interface to another application known as Xinit. And Xinit is an easier interface to the individual tools you actually need to use to start up your X server. Now, if none of that made any sense, basically it's an application to start up your graphical environment from the TTY. Even though StartX is an interface to a couple of other applications, it is still incredibly lightweight and starts up your X server basically instantly. But what if I told you that someone took the idea of StartX being a simpler interface to start up your X server and then basically made it minimal almost to the point of absurdity? You might think something like that really doesn't have any reason to exist, but I'm going to argue that it makes far more sense to actually use. Today we're looking at an application known as SX. Now, unlike a lot of the other applications that I show, I can't exactly show you this starting up an X server because recording that would be incredibly difficult. I guess I could point my camera at the screen, but what I can say is the X server that I'm running right now was started by this application and it does it without any difficulties whatsoever. But the way you're gonna run the program basically every single time with the exception of having your config file located somewhere that isn't the default location is we'll just go and run the sx command and it will start up the x server. In this case though, it's not going to work because we've already gone and done so. If you do have your config file located somewhere that isn't the default location though, basically all you do is just pass in the path to that config file and then you'll be good to go. Now this config file does actually have to be executable. If it isn't executable, before you actually pass in the path, also go and pass in sh to actually execute it with that shell and then it will go and work perfectly fine. But it makes more sense to just go and chmod plus x the file instead and have it work without having that extra little bit. What you're seeing on the screen right now is one of the biggest reasons why I think you should be running SX. This is everything the application can do. So in the case of StartX, you have a bit of configuration you can do. You can pass some options through to like some of the lower level tools. But in SX, none of that is here. The entire interaction with the X server is completely hard coded and not exposed to the user. So even if you wanted to go and break something, you don't have the option to actually do so. Now, in some configurations, this might actually be a deal breaker. You might actually have to go and pass in some custom options and do some fiddling around to get it actually working properly. But the vast majority of people using Start X won't have to do that. Basically, they'll just have a file They'll start X and it just works. So rather than having all of this extra stuff that you can possibly go and break, why don't we just get rid of it because you're not actually using it? And one of the problems I have with Xnit and start X is by default, they both dump their Xnit RC file and their X authority file directly into the home directory. Now, if you don't care about your home directory, that's perfectly fine. But in my case, I try to avoid it actually getting cluttered and I really don't like applications that don't actually respect the rules that exist for where these files should be located. They can be fixed in the case of Xinit with its Xinit RC. It does read an environment variable to actually find where that should be located and start X like with SX does actually accept a file path for the Xinit RC file. In the case of the X authority file, they both also read an environment variable called X authority to find where that should actually be located. But I don't want to have to configure that. I just want it to work out of the box and SX doesn't have that problem. So in the case of SX, its config file by default is going to be located in the .config slash SX slash SXRC file. As I mentioned earlier, that file does need to be executable. Now, in the case of the X authority file, that file is actually going to be located in your .local directory inside of the share directory and then inside of the SX folder. And it's going to be located right here. This is where it should be out of the box. It should never have been put inside of the home directory. This is just much, much neater. Now, I mentioned hard coding earlier. One of the other things this guarantees is when you start up your X server, it's always going to be started up on the TTY that you're currently on. In the case of start X, you could go and say, be on TTY1 and then start up the X server over on TTY2. 
but generally you don't really need to do this. Most Linux users probably don't even acknowledge the fact that the other TTYs actually exist unless something breaks. So if you're never going to be using that functionality, like I mentioned earlier, why should it even be there? Just have it so wherever the user is, just make it work there. By having all of this extra functionality completely stripped out, it makes it much, much harder to actually make a mistake in how your X server is configured. But if you somehow still manage to make a mistake, let's say when you're trying to launch up your desktop environment or your window manager, you make a mistake with the exec command. In that case, it does very little proxy error checking. Basically, rather than taking the error messages that are generated from the base applications and then changing them into some form that makes more sense in the context of this application, basically, it's just going to show you those error messages directly and then you can work out what is actually wrong with those base applications. The advantage of doing it like this is, one, it's much, much easier to maintain because then the developer doesn't have to worry about all these weird edge cases with different applications and different error messages. And also, the error messages are probably going to be far more informative because they're being made by the application that's actually having the problem. But even with that extra information, if you don't know how to actually address the problem, because you have these base error messages, rather than error messages for an application that basically no one uses, you can go and take that error message, put it on, I don't know, DuckDuckGo, Start Page, whatever your favorite search engine is, and see if anyone else has had a similar problem with that base application, and you can actually find useful information like that. Now, the developer does say this isn't intended to be a direct replacement for Start X and X in it. Instead, it provides a different and more limited interface. Now, I can understand where he's coming from with that because it doesn't provide the same level of customization. But I would argue that it basically, even with that very limited interface, does effectively act as a drop-in direct replacement because I can't think of the last time I have ever included an option with Start X. Looking back on it, I don't think that I have ever actually done so. The only thing I've included was an option for our file path, and that actually is included here as well. When I said this was minimal, basically to the point of absurdity, I genuinely meant so because the application is only 28 lines of code. I know it says 47 lines here. This is counting everything, including the spaces, and it says 36 here, but that's also including the comments why GitHub includes comments in their lines of code, I don't know, but it is 28 lines of code. So if you sort of want to work out how to do something similar yourself, maybe you want to have basically what this is doing, but you want to actually add some level of customization to it. I think this is actually a really good baseline to work from because it gives you the stuff you actually need to understand how to actually start up an X server without all that extra stuff that the, I think, 800 line code base that exists for X in it and 300 line code base that exists for start X or it might be the other way around but even so for both of those they are way way bigger applications now it's not perfect there is one kind of really big problem that does exist it's not going to affect any Linux users but if you're using BSD this is likely never going to work and that's mainly because the BSDs handle their TTYs just a little bit differently. So as it says here, due to my design choice of coupling the TTY number to XORG's VT argument and display value, it may mean neither OpenBSD or FreeBSD will ever work. The reason for this seems to be due to how FreeBSD and OpenBSD won't let the XORG server take over an active TTY. Instead, it generates a cryptic error message telling us that EE unrecognized option VT0. The simplest fix for this would basically be a little bit of platform detection where on Linux we run it as it currently is and then on BSD you would basically have to modify it to make it so it works on that system. But because this application is trying to be as minimal as possible, that doesn't really make sense with the way the application currently exists. Now, there is a separate application that works over on 
OpenBSD called XenoDM, but I don't have the ability to go and test that one. One thing I probably should have mentioned earlier is that your XNet RC file is going to be the exact same sort of file that works in the SXRC as well. I'm basically just linking it over and it works perfectly fine. There's no need to go and modify that. It's the exact same syntax. If I was going to count the number of CPU cycles for this application and for StartX or XNet, SX probably is going to be quicker. But that's not the reason why I care about it. On my system at least, there is no noticeable difference between the two applications. I am running StartX instead of those applications to basically protect myself from my own stupidity, and I think you should do the same as well. Because this is just a shell script, there is nothing complicated that exists with its installation. I think there might be an AUR package, but you don't really need to go and do so. It doesn't have any dependencies that you won't already have. It requires XORG and XORTH, both of which are in the XORG package, and also URANDOM, which you will have if you've installed Linux. Do you think this application has no reason to exist, or are you going to switch to it yourself? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. That'll be pretty much everything for me, and before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andrew Mitchell, Nathan, David Carl, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Michael Pithy, Stephen, Tease Through, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That'll be pretty much everything for me and I'm out.